hello friends and welcome back it's always good to have you here for my new subscribers I am Renice and thank you so much for joining this family you're in the right place now this morning I want to talk to us about self-love it's a hot topic yes because recently I posted a video to TikTok. The people talk. The people talk. If we wear pretty dresses, the people will talk. If we are fat and looking well, they will say we are swell. If we are meager and looking thin, they will say consumption and ride with kin. So the aim is to just praise God and let the people talk. We can't stop persons from saying what they want to say about us. But what can we do? This kind of self-love, what does it entail? And I want to talk about the topic from a biblical standpoint. We must love ourselves. The Bible tells us that we are to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So yes, we are supposed to love ourselves, but sometimes we misconstrue what that really means. Well, personally, I know that there were times when in loving myself, I thought it was dressing over the top, putting on the finest clothing, wearing makeup and jewelry and adorning myself in a fashionable way. And, you know, just putting myself out there. Many of you know my story, but I have learned that true self-love is finding your identity in Jesus Christ it's that simple it's accepting who you are in God your identity is in God so let us talk a little bit about self-love and I have here a presentation that I prepared and it is available on the teachers pay teachers website I will leave the link in the description and I truly hope that you'll be blessed by this encouragement. All right, I want you to think for a moment. And this activity is for males and females too, because indeed the men from time to time may not feel that sense of self-worth or may not love themselves as the Bible stipulated. Do you like what you see in the mirror? Think about it. If there is a mirror nearby, go and look at yourself. Do you like what you see? Or you may want to take a selfie and look at, stare at that selfie. Do you like what you see? State one word that describes you. What word comes to mind when you are describing yourself? What would you say is your best physical feature? Well, I can tell you that as a girl growing up, I did not quite like what I saw in the mirror because I was very, very skinny. I was maga. I felt unattractive. And it really caused me to have a low self-esteem. My self-esteem was low because I was skinny in my culture. If you are not fluffy to the world, you're not saying nothing. I know of cases where the fluffy to the world are trying so hard to be slim and the slimmers are trying so hard to be fluffy so how can God please us <laughs> I believe I strongly believe that God wants us to accept ourselves for who we are we should strive to accept ourselves for who we are make sure that you are healthy if you are chubby or if you are slim, you should strive to be healthy. And most importantly, fulfilling the purpose for which God has made you. When you are actively engaged in fulfilling your God-given purpose, when you are active in the kingdom and doing the things of God, doing the things that God loves, then that's where your true identity and sense of self-love 
will manifest. By definition, self-love is regard for one's own well-being and happiness, chiefly considered as a desirable rather than a narcissistic characteristic. We may know of narcissistic traits. I would encourage you to go and listen to Bishop R.C. Blake's teaching on the narcissist. It's a spirit that works within people to cause others to feel less important than they are. So in other words, you, the narcissist would cause you to feel small for them to seem high and mighty. My personal definition of self-love is knowing your identity in Jesus Christ. As simple as that. Knowing who you are and whose you are. And being confident and comfortable with you. How can we foster self-love? I want the base text to be from Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And this is the King James Version. Now, what does it mean by the word is quick and powerful? Another version says alive or living and active. It means that once the word is proclaimed, it is working. It penetrates the depths of our being. It tells us the truth about ourselves like nothing else can. It has the power to change hearts like nothing else can. So your perception of you, all it takes is a mindset. You should have the mind of Christ. To believe what the word says about you in order for you to foster this self-love. In addressing self-love, it is important to know that there are cautions. Romans 12 verse 3 tells us, For I say to you through the grace given to me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to. So that's a caution in loving yourself and trying to live as God intended. We are not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to. Another scripture says, Proverbs 16 verse 18, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Now remember we don't want to fall. We want to stand strong in God and on his word. So in loving yourselves, we are not going to get prideful and haughty. Remember, we don't want to be so high for God to bring us down. So we are to act in humility. Mark chapter 12 verse 30 to 31 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all all your soul with all your mind and all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself there is no commandment greater than these the word is alive and active are you actively now thinking about how to love yourselves as the bible intends for you to do not Compare yourself with others. That's a, that's a dangerous thing that we do from time to time. I have been guilty of that in the past. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. That's 1 Samuel 16 verse 7. Let go of past mistakes. Boy, I struggled with this one. Letting go of what has let go of me long time. Lord help us. Second Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. 
old things are passed away and behold all things are become new now friends we cannot go back to the past to make right the wrongs we've done only god can go back there and when he saves us he said our sins are cast in the sea of forgetfulness never to be remembered anymore and at times we find that we turn deep sea divers are we gone back to dig up the things that my god already threw down let go of past mistakes trust god with all your hearts and allow him to help you to truly love yourselves we are saved by grace there is no perfect man on this earth we all err christ's blood washes us from our sin go your way and sin no more speak positive affirmations Speak positive affirmations, some of which are, I am loved by God. And we know John 3 verse 16. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. God will never leave me or abandon me. That's Hebrews 13 verse 5. God has great plans for my life. That's Jeremiah 29 verse 11. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's Philippians 4 verse 13. God listens. 1 John 5 verse 14. God had me in mind before I was born. That's Jeremiah 1 verse 5. I have been uniquely designed for a purpose. 2 Timothy 1 verse 9. And I trust God. Proverbs 3 verse 5. Yes man, speak positive things over your lives daily. Encourage your spirits. Use the word of God to cause you to love yourself. Be content in who you are and know whose you are. Note the things you are proud of. Note the things that you are proud of. Celebrate your accomplishments. Of course. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 21 says, He is your praise and he is your God who has done these great and awesome things for which you have seen. The Bible tells us that a man's gifts will make room for him. When we use our time and resources and talents to excel in our endeavors, just know that to God be all the glory. Man was made to serve God and we are conduits of the gospel of Jesus Christ. When we are actively in our purpose, we'll find that we are loving ourselves and loving what God is doing through us. Rest in God. Exodus 33 verse 14 says, And he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. God desires to give us rest. Even in this time, even while we are here on earth, and I want us to experience that divine rest. Spend time in the presence of God. Even when things around us are not favorable. Thank you so much friends for your time. And I hope that these words will resonate with you. As you continue to love yourselves the way God intense the way God wants us to have a blessed day I love you but Jesus loves you more be blessed